Morning. Welcome back to the channel. Right. We'll just go get um go pick that up and move him to his next job. So we're taking the old 7720S. Good old Massey. Good old Massey. Massey power. Cup holder, most important thing in the tractor. It starts, it's power. Power, power, power. Right, we've got the low loader on. Go pick that up from where he's been working. But right, let's crack on. Right, what a weapon. Oh. Lovely, lovely, lovely. The big 7720. S. S is for stupendous. Stupendously horrible. It's not a fin. Oh. Nah, these weren't good tractors in their day. Well, ain't that old to be fair, but still a good tractor. It does what it needs to do. 200 horsepower, but when you've been in newer stuff and nicer stuff, yeah. But, oh well, it still moves the digger. It still moves the low loader, so it's all good. But right, we'll go get Dad. Go chuck him on the old low loader and get him over the road. Right, catch you in a bit when we're loading that up. Don't forget, like, share, subscribe. Do well, people, do well. And boom. Just like that, we're here to pick up Dad's eight tonner. Right, we'll get that loaded up after we have our sausage sarnies. Oh yeah, the joys, I'll show you. Just after we have them, we'll get loaded up. That. Oh, it's horrible. <laughs> well, we get this loaded up. Mmm, refreshing. Here come the horrible bucket. The horrible foot bucket, I hate that thing. Up, look. New plate on the bottom of the ditch and bucket.
Oh, we get strapped up. Right, we are on the move. Well, let's go get it to Dad's next job. Drop him off, get this back to the yard. Jump back on my digger and I'll show you what I'm up to today. So, not only am I driving a digger, I'm driving a tractor. Not only am I driving a tractor, but I've got a little vibrator with me as well. Yes, I will show you my vibrator. No. Right, Dad's all dropped off. It's now off. It's got a ditch right literally right down the bottom there. There's a ditch that I put in winter time to relieve a moat there of water because that's building up and flooding the house. So he's now going to go down there and just level that off ready for planting. So yeah, that's what he's doing. I'm now going to take you back and show you my vibrator. Naughty, naughty. And uh, show you what I'm up to. I'll see you back there. In one, two, three, boom. boom. I'm back. Right, so from what you can see here, I'm relaying the driveway. So literally you've got three and a half or four meters from that edge there to the edge of the hedge there. All this is as rough as rough can be. So all I'm doing is going through with a ripper tooth, ripping everything up, tracking over it, breaking all the big clumps up, pulling it about with a tooth bucket to get the sort of angle I want where it chamfers off this way, tracking it back in, ditch and bucket, grade off, final thing, roll it. And this is how it's coming out. And it's coming out really well and really nice. So as you can see from up in the far distance, the track has got out there somewhere and the client is wanting us to bring the track back in and nip all the traffic back up and stop running on the grass. So then I'm going along and I'm ripping up what they've run over here, ripping it all back up, trying to fluff it back up because then it's going to reseed all the grass once I level it off. That is what I'm doing. But yes, my vibrator I have got is a um, 1200 ham roller. I will show you it now. Yes, it's a lovely vibrator sitting there just vibrating away. Oh, suit you, sir. The only thing is, it's noisy. Yeah. But you can see she's parked up in the hedge, literally just there. I've now got some more ripping to do and reline, and I will come back to you. See you in a second. Doof. I'll show you what I'm quickly, how I'm quickly doing this. So literally, under this all here is a load of chalk and hardcore and everything else. So all I'm doing, I'm not going to the full depth. I'm literally just, I don't know, taking four to six inches and just sort of breaking that top little layer up just enough so I can drag some material with me and get to the levels I want to get to and fill the holes in. So I'll go through first with this and sort of break it up a little bit so it's easier to manage and it saves wearing out my bucket and that as well. So I literally go through and score it up like I'm doing now. Sometimes that'll go slightly deeper than I want it to. It doesn't really matter. It's all gonna be compacted back down again. In front of me, I've rolled that four times now. So it's gone down nice and tight. Perfect weather for doing this. Lovely and dry overhead. The ground slightly dry as well, which is lovely. You can see the chalk in there. I don't want to disturb too much of that chalk because that is a good, good base down there. But it also, I've got to slope everything that way towards the field. Then eventually, I think the plan is we're going to put a pond in down the bottom and then all the way along this track and the other track I've got to do, we're going to have a ditch and link it all up and somewhere for the water to run to because that's the issue we've got. The water's got nowhere to go. So it sits on the drive and when you run through it, it just keeps like washing it out. So we're just trying to alter the pitch of this and get rid of the water. So yeah, literally that's all I'll be doing is ripping like I've just done that bit there. Go along, just keep ripping it. So I rip it like this, I then track over it to break the big lumps up. I then use my tooth bucket to rake through it a bit. I could use a rake, but there's 
no point. I want to move material as well into different places. So just use my big bucket. Um, and then track that in again or roll it in. And then grade it off and re-roll it another three times after that to get to what I want to get to. Then I'll go along and do the side like I have further down with the topsoil. Just go and dress it in for now until we're ready to dig the ditch. I want to get the driveway done first so they can carry on using it. And then I can dig a ditch while they're using it, you see. There's method to our madness. But right, I'm going to carry on for a little bit, get some more of this done, and I'll come back to you when I've got my big bucket on, and I'll show you what I'm doing with that. Right, so what I'm doing now is I'm literally just tracking these big lumps in. As you can see, the width of the driveway is this, not what it actually is. It's where I've ripped up. So I'll just track this in quickly. Like I say, just break them big clumps up, really. Makes life a bit easier. Hasn't got to be perfect, like I say. I just want to break them up, that's all I'm doing. And bing bang boom! That's that all tracked in. So now it's all tracked in, just roughly to break them clods in. What I'll now do is roughly sit where in the middle of the track. That's that heap of stuff I'll leave till I drag with a ditch and bucket. But what I'll do here now is this stuff on the side, this is too high here. So just sort of drag it and move it about just to start getting some small stuff. And then sort of this side I want to build up a little bit. So it's literally just moving it about, roughly getting it where I want it. And then I'll come back and grade it off with a ditch and bucket at the height I want. As long as this side is higher than the other side, all is good. Like I say, I'll come and grade it off with a ditch and bucket to make it smoothish. I can't get it 100% smooth for the simple fact of there's a lot of big stuff in here as well as small stuff, so it's an absolute nightmare to get it 100% smooth but it's better than what it was. If I could have some material to put on top, I would, but it'd be thousands and thousands of tons of stuff that I need to put back. That's the edge of the track. Turn a bit off. Like that, and that's all I'm gonna be doing. Just knocking that about until I get it where I want it. So right, I'm gonna carry on, get this bit done, and I'll come back to you just before I track it in. Right, so as you can see, I've raked that through with the bucket, it totally changes it, it knocks it all about, puts it into small stuff instead. I'm now gonna track that in, and then with the ditch and bucket, pull all that back and on that slight angle again. And then roll it in, and that'll be that bit done. And then on to next. And that's all I'm gonna just keep doing, is doing 20 meter sections like that. Just keep working it, getting it right and keep moving back. It's a bit of a slow process, but it needs to be decent. There's a lot of weight runs on this as well. Some big tractors and some big tankers and stuff. And lorries run up and down here now and again as well. So it's got to be right. So right, make sure it matches up to that side, which it does. Beautiful, beautiful.
and it's literally just keep working it till I get the right angle. The first bit is always a bit of a nightmare because it's got a lot of the big stuff, well, I've gone over that to tracking the previous stuff, it's sort of rounded it fairly tight. But just keep slowly working it and all the fines start coming through to fill the gaps in. Like that. And this does look beautiful. Beautiful. So yeah, that's a common misconception. That's big words for me. Um, when there's holes in tracks and stuff, a lot of people think the material's disappeared. The material's still there. Nine times out of 10, it's either washed out or it's just pushed down. So all that needs, basically all I'm doing here is just fluffing it back up again and packing it back down level. I've brought no material into this whatsoever. It's just what's already here which is a bit of a bonus um, and it saves money but like I say I think this has been this is literally being concreted in the next couple of years so yeah some people might not agree with what I'm doing but it seems to work uh, I've done some last year and the tracks held up well considering how much rain we had this year held up really well the amount of traffic has been over it but there that is just a little bit in the center there just to take off like that and then i'll just keep working it back and then i'll roll it in so right i'll come back to you when i'm about to jump on the vibrator the big human vibrator sorry roller yeah just showing you some of this material like i say it's all hard for rock, hardcore and chalk and when it mixes together it goes down well I mean I've tracked that and it's, it's solid so once it's rolled it's even harder and then once it's had all the traffic over it's even harder but no it's gone down really really well at the minute so we'll jump on old hammy ham ham the old vibrating ruler and uh Roll this section in. As you can see, this has gone down really nice, this has. And like I say, perfect conditions. It's not raining, it's nice and sunny, it's hot. So yeah, it does the job lovely. All right. That's that bit rolled in. So now all I've got to do is just scratch down here and this bit's nearly done. I've got probably one more pull till I'm up at the corner, then I think there's concrete in that corner. So there's not much to do there. And then I start sort of there again and go all the way around that corner and up. So yeah, got a fair bit to do. But right, I'm gonna park a digger up. I'm gonna sort that topsoil out first thing in the morning. Let it strip down there. And I shall come back to you when I start that one. But I'd like to say thank you to everybody who has liked, share, subscribe. If you haven't, please do. And we shall see you on the next one. See you later. Boom.